Hello, everybody, and welcome to Liverpool. Welcome to the second year, and welcome to this module, Signals and Systems. My name is Walid al Noemi, and I'll be taking you through this module, ELEC 270. And while I'd love to have met you face to face in a lecture theatre in person, uh, we all know that isn't possible uh, at the moment. As soon as that becomes possible, as soon as it's safe to do so, then we will be meeting in a more natural environment. So I hope you find this module, um, as the rest of your year, stimulating, relevant and useful. So relevant and useful, I mean relevant to the rest of your studies, to everything else you'll be studying this year and next year, and relevant and useful for your future career. So everything we do in this module and in other modules is to make you better engineers and better, more employable engineers. So your, your employment journey started the day you joined university. And everything we do is an attempt to make you a more employable engineer. So my job is to try to make the subject matter stimulating, relevant and useful. So as you watched in those two little video clips before the lecture, did you, did you hear that, um, that sound bite? They said everything in the universe can be expressed as a signal. That's powerful stuff. Everything in the universe can be expressed as a signal. And when they were talking about the signal processing to reduce the wind noise from that, um, uh, that video recording, they described that signal processing as like magic. So that's what we'll be looking at in this uh, module. We'll be, we'll be looking at signals and systems as a way to describe the universe and as a way to do a little bit of magic. So a few words about the module. It's a 15 credit module and it runs over one semester. So all the content is compressed from now until January. OK, so you have a final assessment in January and you have coursework from now until then. So that makes it an intense module with quite a fast tempo. We have a lot of material to cover in 12 weeks. But despite that, students tend to do really well on ELEC 270, with hardly any students failing. So last year, only eight students out of 307 failed. Five of those students who failed, failed because they cheated in the final exam. So really only three students managed to fail this uh, module. And those three students failed because they didn't do the class tests. So even though they did fairly well in the final exam, they didn't do the class tests and therefore they failed. So is that because it's an easy module? No, it isn't a particularly easy module. You might find this is your hardest module, but because the module is structured so that you get many opportunities to collect grades and demonstrate your understanding, students find it easier to do well. Does that make sense? So it's not an easy module. The content isn't easy, but it is easy to do well because I give you many opportunities. OK, so I said there's coursework in an exam. It's actually 50 percent coursework, 50 percent exam. There's a final assessment in January worth 50 percent, and then there's 50 percent coursework in the form of a lab and fortnightly class tests. That means a class test every two weeks. So the routine is going to be a lecture followed by a problem class, followed by a problem sheet. The following week, you'll have a lecture followed by a problem class, followed by a class test, and then you repeat. So a lecture every week, a pre-recorded lecture, a problem sheet every week, a problem class, which is completely different from the problem sheet, every two weeks, and a class test, or a home test in this case, every two weeks. So here's the deal. If you engage with the material, if you watch the lectures every week, if you attend the problem classes, you go through the problem sheets, and you go through the practice tests that I give you, 
you will do well in the class tests and you'll absolutely smash the final exam. That's simply because that's the way the module works. It's problem based learning. You learn by doing the problems. So if you do the problems every week, you can't help doing well in the end. For my part, I'll do my best to make the subject as interesting and relevant as possible. I'll try to be as responsive as I can to your questions, and I'll offer continuous support from now until your exam in January. So I hope you enjoy the journey, and I wish you the best of luck. Now, today, I'm going to offer an overview of um, this module. So I'm going to go through a few things about the module uh, for you to follow. OK, the first lecture hasn't happened yet. I will make that available to you very soon. So if not today, tomorrow, you'll have the first lecture. OK, so why are we studying signals and systems? As I said, everything in the universe can be described as a uh, signal. So what is it about signals and systems that makes it so important? So subjects you'll be studying this semester, next semester and next year are all closely related to signals and systems. So like what you'll be seeing on a daily basis will probably look something more like this. So very mathematical signals being drawn. Integration, it doesn't really look like it's much fun, but actually what you'll be dealing with on a day to day basis. Will. Feed directly, I'm having a little bit of a difficulty getting this to work. So on a day to day basis, it's very mathematical, but this is where you'll find these concepts applied. So in communications, so we won't be able to look at this in the module, but next semester, those of you doing ELEC 202 will be looking at using signals for communicating. So communications is actually communication systems. So it is a study of systems and we are using signals. So the world around us is full of communication systems that we use on a day to day basis. And this is what we will be um, looking at. So this is why signals and systems is so relevant. And instrumentation now I'm talking about ELEC 207 instrumentation and control systems, but also instrumentation in general, whether you're doing a project next semester, whether you're looking at a, a wearable device or some kind of a, um, a sensor circuit. So whenever you have a block diagram like that, you're describing a system. So you have control, feedback, analog to digital conversion, sampling, storage, processing. All of this is based on the material we'll be looking at together in ELEC 270. Again, if you're doing the mechatronics and robotics um, program, or even if you're not, if you're doing projects involving robotics and um, uh, things like um, autonomous vehicles and drones and robots, you will be looking at the integration of signals and systems and it will all come down to the concepts that we'll be looking at uh, together in this module. So this is an example. These, these are examples, it's not an exhaustive list, but if you're doing image or video processing next year, an image is simply a two dimensional signal. So image processing is simply a case of uh, processing a signal in two dimensions. So we'll, we'll probably we'll, th th this uh, character here, her name is Lena and we will be um, 
uh, meeting her again in, uh, I think, lecture four. Um, but this is just to show you how signals and systems relate to so many other things that you'll be studying. Okay, the structure of the module. I've already said that it will consist of um, 15 credits. We have 12 lectures, 11 lectures containing new content, and the final lecture will be a revision, an exam revision session. We have live problem classes every other Monday, so on odd weeks. So the week after next, we're going to have a problem class. The week after, uh, two weeks after that, we'll have another. We're going to have problem sheets released every week. So the first three are already available to you on, um, on Canvas. There's going to be a lab, for a series lab. If you're in Liverpool, the lab will be physically in the department, in the lab. If you're not in Liverpool, then some other arrangement um, will be made. You can speak to your uh, lab organizer for that. There's also going to be six class tests. We now call them home tests. These are every even week, okay? And the schedule is available on, Vital, on uh, Canvas. So every even week, there's going to be a, a class test. That's an online test that you take at 11 a.m. on a Monday morning. Okay, so instead of this session today, next week, you won't be meeting me, you'll be carrying out your class test. Okay, so a little bit more about the structure. So it's a slightly unconventional module in the sense that it's not taught or assessed the way um, some of your other subjects are. So. Back in 2013, this module looked like a normal 15-credit um, module with two lectures every week, a problem class every week, a lab worth 5%, and an exam worth 95%. And nobody particularly liked it. It was a lot of work. You had to come in three times a week and listen to me talking for three hours and then revise for an exam worth 95% and nobody particularly liked it. Um, students didn't do well. There was a high failure rate. Average was around 52%, and it wasn't a particularly satisfying experience. So over the years, since 2014, we've been changing this module until we, we, we now have this structure here, where we scrapped the old format. Now we have problem classes, live problem classes. We have problem sheets. Each problem sheet consists of questions with pen casts or screen casts. So this, these are YouTube videos of me explaining how to answer the question. So I talk through every step of almost every question. So there's almost 200 videos on YouTube already. Okay, and I'm going to be adding to that um, uh, playlist this year. So that's on the problem sheets every week. So you're going to have plenty and plenty of examples to help you, um, uh, to help you uh, go through uh, the material. So actually, I need to just elaborate slightly on that. So now you have the problem sheets. You have a discussion board that I will be updating regularly. I'll be supporting you with that. So any questions, use the discussion board. You have practice questions, you have practice tests, and you have fortnightly homework or class tests. Then you have a 50% exam in the end. Now, students have really liked that. It's meant a lot more work, but the work is distributed over uh, 12 weeks, so it's actually less of a burden. And students have been doing much better so um, the average has actually shot up from around 52, 53 back in 2013. It's gone up consistently. So the year before last, we had an average of 74%. We, we've never seen that kind of average in, in year two, except in the labs. And last year, the average um, was 70%. Again, very high compared to any other uh, second year module. This is 70% so is the threshold for first class. So if your average is 70%, that means that students have been doing particularly well. Okay, so what the average is this year, that's up to you. Okay, well, it's up to 
to you, up to me to deliver the content and to support you, to help you achieve your best, but it's up to you. See if you can in improve on that record. Okay. So, how are we going to do this? I'm going to pre-record a lecture every week. That'll be roughly 40, 45 minute lecture every week. And that'll be available to you on the Monday or the Tuesday on Canvas. There'll also be a live problem uh, class every other week. So that, that, there's a little mistake there. So a live problem class every other week and a problem sheet every week. On even weeks, there will be a class test. So every other Monday, 11 o'clock, there will be a class test. I will give you details about that as we get closer uh, to the time. If you have questions, I encourage you to use the discussion board on Canvas. That way, I can reply to you and everybody else can read the answer. Okay, so the best place to get an answer to a question is on the discussion board. The worst way to get an answer is to send me an email. That's the worst way. Okay, so uh, if it's about the, the, the content of the, um, the course, my reply is going to be, please post your question on the discussion board. Now, if you have, a, if you have a, a query that's not related to the content of the material, it's related to you or related to something specific uh, to you, um, come and see me. So my office hours, my virtual office hours, are every day, 12 o'clock, to one o'clock. Okay, so if you go to the Canvas calendar, there is a link. That link takes you straight into a Zoom meeting and you can see me and talk to me. Or you can meet me right after uh, this session. So every Monday after the, um, or, uh, uh, the, the, the latter end, so the, the, the second half of our problem class, there will always be a question and answer session. So you can uh, turn on your microphone and ask me any question you like every week on Monday. But you can also come and see me at any time. Okay, so my office hours are Monday to Friday, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Just click the link. It'll take you to a Zoom meeting. I'll be notified and I'll be able to see you. So, I've already covered the material you'll be using. The two things I haven't mentioned are past exams. So as we get closer to the end of the semester, I'll share with you some past exam papers, okay? Um, and we might go through the solutions of some of the questions just to show you how to approach the kind of questions that you'll see in an exam. Because exam questions are very different from the class test questions and the questions from your problem sheets. Some will be similar, but some will be uh, more open-ended and more demanding. So we'll look at past exams in our final session. But you also need a textbook, okay? It, it, I, I am not a talking textbook, and my lecture notes are not enough to cover the material. Lecture notes plus problem sheets plus practice questions will probably be enough for you to do well in the exam, but you need a textbook. Okay, for the, a more in-depth understanding, for a thorough explanation, get a textbook. Okay, so I recommend um, a few textbooks, but really any university text that has signals and systems in the title should be absolutely fine. So the Shorm's Outline series is particularly good, the second one here in the list. That's particularly good because it, it's just full of questions but you will have plenty of questions to practice with. So get yourself a textbook. Either borrow one from the library, or if you're not on campus, if you're not in Liverpool, find one online. There are some free texts that you can just download, or you can buy a textbook. They're not that expensive. And a good signals and systems textbook is a good investment because it will help you um, for this subject, other subjects, and it will help you um, uh, in future years as well. So, what is it we're actually covering? When we say signals and systems, 
they're two separate things. So we use signals in our systems. So we're going to start by talking about signals, and that'll take us about seven weeks. Then we'll talk about sy systems. So when we talk about signals, we're going to talk about signal classification. That's this week's lecture. Singularity functions, elementary functions, Fourier series the week after that, Fourier transform the week after that, and then sampling. So signal classification, etc. So all of these are week by week. So each of these is a one week uh, topic, except Fourier transform. I spent two weeks on that and sampling. Now you're going to cover sampling in other modules as well, but we'll cover it uh, probably first here. Then we're going to speak about systems for four or five weeks. We start with system classification. Then we speak about impulse response, Laplace transform. Then discrete time systems. We introduce something called the Z transform. Then we speak about um, block diagram reduction very briefly at the end. So in a nutshell, that is the module. Okay, I will um, I will um, try my best, as I said, to uh, make the subject as engaging as interesting, as stimulating, as relevant, as useful as possible, okay? But there are two sides to that deal. What you need to do is engage. You need to attend the lectures. Don't just turn up to the problem class without having watched the lecture, okay? I'll try to keep my lecture notes brief and clear. I try to keep my lectures short and clear, but you need to attend them. They won't be on your timetable, but you need to find the time to attend the lectures. Now, if you do that, if you engage with the material, if you watch the lectures every week, if you attend the problem classes, if you go through the problem sheets and the practice tests, you will do well in your class tests. And if you do well in your class tests, you can't help but do well in the final exam. OK, now I call it an exam. It's going to be some kind of exam replacement. It will be an open book um, uh, test and you'll be given um, plenty of details about that as um, as as the time approaches. OK, so uh, that's the deal in a, in a in a nutshell. I support you. I'm responsive to you. I make the subject interesting. You need to engage. You'll do you'll you'll do well, okay. So that's that's elect two seven zero in a nutshell. We kick off this week. Next week there'll be a class test, okay. You're wondering how are you going to test me on something that we haven't studied yet. We haven't gone through a problem class. There will be problem sheets, and it's really easy. The first week is just a chance for you to get um, marks for nothing really. You get a mark for simply going through. Um, some very elementary uh, topics, and there'll be plenty of practice, okay? But it's it's a chance to actually see how all this is working, okay? So there are six class tests in total, okay? And 40% of the grade depends on those class tests, with 10% for the lab, okay? So that's um, all I have to say for the module overview. Um, it looks like we won't have time to start the lecture today, but I will record it and make it available to you.